Hello, here's a quick video to show you how I managed to get Visual Basic 6 with Service Pack 6 working on Windows 10 64-bit. I'm using Visual Basic 6.0, not the entire Visual Studio package, and it's the professional version, not the enterprise version. The procedure might be slightly different if you have one of these other versions. So, uh, as well as the VB6 installation CD, you'll also require these two files. The first file is the Visual Studio 6.0 installer wizard from nuke.vbcorner.net. Note that you need to create an account on the website in order to download the file. Um, that took me an embarrassingly long amount of time to figure out. This installer is supposed to do everything necessary to install VB6, but I found I had to do a lot more. The second file is Service Pack 6 for Visual Basic 6.0, available from Microsoft. I'll link to it in the video description. Start by extracting the installer wizard zip file. Before you do anything else, disable user account control in Windows. I'm not sure if you actually need to do this, but it's a good idea when dealing with older programs and you can always re-enable it later. Start up the installer wizard by running the VS6 installer executable. It should run as admin by default, but it doesn't hurt to expressly run it as such. The installer will prompt you to set a root folder for files to be copied into, so create a folder somewhere and select it. Next, select the version of Visual Basic or Visual Studio you have, in my case it's Visual Basic 6 Professional Edition. Now we have to prepare VB6. Insert your VB6 CD into the drive, click the Step 1 Prepare button and point it at your CD drive. It will now copy the files to the hard drive and perform the necessary modifications. Once the copy is done, click the Install Visual Basic button. It will likely prompt you to copy MS Java into the Windows folder, so do that. If it doesn't ask you, then you probably already have it copied, but if something goes wrong later, you might have to copy it manually. The first install attempt will fail and complain about the installation wizard. This is likely because the wizard inserts a key into the 64-bit registry rather than the 32-bit one. We can fix this manually by finding the key.dat file in the root folder we created earlier, copying it to the desktop, renaming it to key.reg, editing it to insert wow6432 node followed by a backslash in between the software and Microsoft parts of the registry path, and then saving and running the file. This should allow the installer to progress to the next stage. When it asks you if you want to do a typical or custom install, pick custom but don't actually change anything. Kick off the install. It'll throw up a bunch of error messages and say VB6 was not installed successfully, but that's okay. Immediately run the installation again. This time click custom, but deselect every entry in the list. It will complain about some components being an essential part of the application, but ignore it. This time the installation procedure will complete successfully, and it will finalize the install that we started last time. Don't bother installing MSDN at this point. If you want to install MSDN later, you can using the install wizard step 2 button. Skip the back office installation and the registration too. Now let's try launching VB6. In the Options tab of the Install Wizard, click Run as Administrator, then when that's done, click Set Vista SP2 Compatible, then finally Create Desktop Shortcut. Annoyingly, the wizard doesn't actually apply these settings to the desktop shortcut, so go to the Properties of that shortcut, then the Compatibility tab, then set Run as Administrator and Vista Service Pack 2 Compatibility Mode. When you run it, it will probably complain about not being able to find DAO350.dll. This is because it has to be manually registered. To do this, fire up Explorer and go to C Windows SysWow64 and find the CMD file. Create a shortcut to this in your desktop in case you need it later and run it in administrator mode. Type the following command line in, I'll paste it into the video description, and run it. If it's successful, it'll say DLL register server succeeded. But Visual Basic still won't run. To get it to run, I had to copy the two DLL files from C Drive, Program Files x86, Common Files, Microsoft Shared, VBA into the Visual Basic directory which is at C program files again, then Microsoft Visual Studio, then VB98. VB6 should now start up. This might be enough to get you going, but I found that a lot of my old VB6 projects just wouldn't open since there were errors loading the MS Common Control and rich text component OCX files. To fix that, we need to install Service Pack 6, which turned out to be another major pain in the arse. First, you need to run a repair install on VB6. For some reason, Service Pack 6 won't load unless you run it. Go to the C drive, Program Files x86, Microsoft Visual Studio, then VB98, then Setup, then 1033, and run the Setup program there. Click Reinstall when it asks you. When that's finished, go back to the directory with Service Pack 6 in it and run it. Extract the file somewhere, then go back to the Install Wizard. Click the Step 3 Prepare Service Pack 6 button, then point it at the folder you extracted Service Pack 6 to. It will copy the files, then you're ready to click the Install Service Pack 6 button. Or at least you would be. If you try it now, it'll seem to install, but VB6 remains the same version. This is because it only updates the system files, but leaves the actual VB6 program alone. To fix this, you'll need to fire up RegEdit and browse to HKey Local Machine, Software, WoW6432 Node, Microsoft Visual Studio 6.0 Setup, and Microsoft Visual Basic. Create a new string value in there called Product Dir and set its value to be the program location of VB6. In my case, C, Program Files x86, Microsoft Visual Studio, VB98. 
Now close regedit and rerun the installer. You'll notice that this time it actually writes to the Visual Basic program directory. Now fire up Visual Basic and check that SP6 is installed. So that's it. If you have problems with this or have any further suggestions, please share them in the comments.